All right, are we, are we good? Green with a delay of 18 seconds. Uh, around 500 kilobytes a second. Hope no one tries to connect to my side of the Wi-Fi. I really wish we'd get the router in my room quicker. Once we get the router in my room, I can just hook up to the ethernet and bam, we'll be done. Don't gotta worry about all that jazz. So, as the stream title suggests, um, we're going to be installing Arch like real men. Uh, let's get the stream chat up on my phone because I don't want to have it open here. That, well, if I use the CLR browser thing from uh, OBS, that might work, but it's going to be slow. And I don't want to deal with the slow chat. I want a real time chat. So. We're gonna find that. Okay, it looks like we're live. Let me scoot my headphones over since I don't need the audio on right now. Let's look here. Twenty four frames a second. <coughs> Not bad for a, what is this, an AMD? Oh, I forget the name of the processor I have, but it was, um, the processor in this computer is before the Core i3. It's an AMD processor. And oh my goodness. The reason I've got lag and everything is because of, um, that processor. So, let's get to it. So I was working on a theme here, as you can see. It's high contrast, so I can see it easier. Um, I could try to just up the font. Let's rename this. I want to save theme as Arch Contrast. Ooh, let's turn up my system sounds a little bit. Where's my... Do you guys like the taskbar on the side? I thought that was really cool. I'm sorry if I pause. I The stream's also playing in this ear, and it makes it hard to talk. I'm going to take the headphone out in a minute. So, we are going to the audio mixer. System sounds can go up. I don't want to play music in the background. I was thinking about it, and then I just went, eh, that's going to hurt my CPU more. And like I said, I've got a terrible processor. So let's not hurt our computer more than we have to. That's a good audio volume. I like it. So uh, this is VirtualBox because I did want to install Arch on this thing. It's an HP stream. And if you know anything about computers, these are not great. It's also like a 32 gig computer, which is good for an operating system and like two and a half text files, and that's about it. Especially with Windows. With Windows 10 on that thing, I couldn't do anything. Um, and I tried to reinstall it, and it broke itself, so I had to install Arch on it. And that's why I was going to do this originally, but then I figured, uh, I know how to install Arch on a UEFI system, so we can do that. Let's start with UEFI because I hate it, um, and BIOS is way easier. So we're going to name it Arch Machine. We're just going to make it a 50 gig machine. And it's Linux Arch64. Arch Next. Is this too hard for you guys to see?
All we need is uh, 3,000 megabytes of RAM should be fine. I'm going to create a hard disk now, create it. Um, what we want? The VDI? Do we want a virtual disk image? I'm a little confused. Let's go with VMDK and split it up into files of less than two. I'm not sure how that's supposed to help me, but Arch Machine Disk. And we're going to make this puppy I think 5 gigs each would be too small, one for BIOS and one for UEFI. So we're going to do 25, how would you split that in half? Let's just do 30. 30 gigs all together. Great. Wow, this does not respect my uh, theme. <laughs> so, settings. Oh, you know what? We can't have a 30 gig disk because one of these has to be UEFI. Let's just delete all the files there. New. So Arch BIOS 64. Arch Linux 64. All right. Um, let's just do, I guess, 2048 is all we need. We're gonna create a virtual hard disk, virtual box, split into files less than two. It's gonna be ten gigs. Uh 15's a little better. It's because we were doing 30 for both. I remember now. Bio store. Nope, that's not store. Door. Okay. Great. All right, there's that. Are we good? Get the stream here. I might save this stream afterwards, actually. I feel like that'd be a great idea. <sighs> so, where are we in the process here? We need to get the ISO loaded. So we go to our little, what is this, controller IDE? You know, I really feel like I need to fix the font. Here, let's do some theming real quick so that you guys can actually read this and understand what the heck is going on. Oh, window color. I gotta go to that. It's weird to edit everything. Tahoma Times New Roman. No, if that's gonna be hard to read too. Traditional Arabic? No. Trebuchet. System? System. Oh yeah. Uh bold. No. System only has one font. Thirteen. Bold. Can you read that? A little better. Put it up to sixteen. There we go. And everything here will be the Homa sixteen. What does the Homa at sixteen look like? Let's put that back down to Tahoma. I think Tahoma was a good idea. Uh, don't make it bold. Okay. Window one or two. Hey, don't let me choose a font size for the window text.
Let me just add that there, put it up to 22. Scroll bar size up. Just kill our eyes with everything, man. 21 there. No, 12 is good, I guess. Okay, is that good? We can read everything now. Hey, Grant, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, my Nebrew? My brother from another mother? I'm being a big nerd. This is going to be a bit of an issue, the text and the buttons, but we'll live with it. We'll be okay. Okay. Now we're just going to call <laughs> save theme. Everything is huge. Save. Look how big this, look how big the text down here is. That's crazy. So yeah, we've got all that, I guess. You still can't see anything here. Arch Linux 2017. Oh, I have the ISO right here. So basically, um, let's go all the way back now. So I made my machine, I gave it a hard disk of 15 gigs. Um, I think I gave it like two gigs of memory, which is 2048 megabytes. Uh, then I am gonna go to settings. We're going to go to, oh, storage. Storage, yeah. So then we go to our controller IDE down here. And we go to the little disk on this side, click it, and you want to go to choose virtual optical disk file. Um, after you do that, you browse to wherever you have your ISOs stored, and you click it, and you click open. Bam, son, it's right there, in yellow. Hard to read, it says Arch Linux 2017 9.1, whatever, yada yada, all of that junk. And then I have my hard disk where all my stuff's going to be stored down here. Okay, now for this one, since it's going to be, is this BIOS? This is BIOS, so I don't got to do anything extra with this. That's all we need. Except we could go to USB and add an empty filter. It's that one up top. And this basically allows you to connect um, USBs from the host computer, which is the big computer that you're using VirtualBox on. And it can actually read those USBs. So that's a good setting to have. Shared folders I don't usually goof with. User interface. Mini toolbar, turn that off. I don't want the mini toolbar because we're not going to be using it much. Okay, and then we go to general, I believe, advanced. Uh, shared clipboard, we're going to go host to guest. Yeah, and then drag and drop will be host to guest as well. So we can go from the outside virtual box into it from the computer, but it can't go the other way. Like if you were gonna get a text file, you could just drag it from your desktop here and put it into virtual box. Have I seen Kung Fury? No, I have not seen Kung Fury. What's that about? All right, and then let's just make our second system while we're at it, so we don't gotta do it later. Uh, it's gonna be Linux, Arch64, up top. Arch64, okay. Arch, U-E-F-I, 64.
can make this 2048 again. 2048 megabytes. Pretty virtual hard disk. And wait back. Oh, nope, K, okay, VMDK. And that's going to be split into files of less than 2 gigs and dynamically allocated, which is already checked for us. You are going to be 15 as well. And you're just going to be UEFI store arch. Create. Okay, so we got two machines. One is UEFI, which is like newer hardware, like this one. This is a UEFI computer. Um, anything that uses Windows 10, like anything shipped with Windows 10 is UEFI most often because it just handles um, the operating system booting a lot faster. But it's a pain to set up other operating systems on. And often if you try to dual boot Windows and Arch or something like that, if you try to dual boot Windows in any Linux distribution, it'll just write over it and you can't boot into it because that's Windows for you. And that's why I like Linux. Which is why we're am going to emulate Linux on this. Um, so we have to set up the UEFI one. I almost forgot. So for UEFI, you go to System, Enable EFI. That's what you want. Like if you're going to emulate Windows 10, you might have to enable EFI as well. Um, there we go. We don't need floppy to boot. Optical is first. Uh, let's fix that on the other one too. Settings. Storage. Uh, system. And floppy is unchecked here as well. Okay. So, UEFI first, my boys. Let's do it. Uh, actually, one minute. I'm going to go to File Preferences. This is just a me thing because I'm streaming. I want it to be able to fit on the stream. And I don't want it to go full screen. So, we're going to go... Input date language display. So we're going to go to hint for maximum guest screen size. Width is going to be 800 and I'm going to want it to be 600. Hi. Okay, so now both of these are going to try to guess 800 by 600 when they resize themselves. That just makes it easier for us. So I guess we could uh, make this smaller. We don't need this to be super big. Let's scoot you down here. Uh, maybe I can just put it up here. It's weird if it's down here by the camera. Uh, UEFI, start that one. This might make the stream go rip while I'm downloading stuff, especially. So let's pray it doesn't do that. Either that or the stream's going to overpower it. Oh, did I put the ISO in? No, 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 get off. Get out of here. Oh, I gotta free this up. Come on. UEFI Interactive Shell version 2.1 EDK2. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, let's just try to... I don't know what it's doing. I turned it off. Oh, can I discord that? Or not discord, can I discard the saved session? Discard save state, there we go. Discard. Oh! <sighs> I'm not used to the universal EFI for VirtualBox. I've actually never done this for VirtualBox, so... This is gonna be a new experience. I've gotta go to... Settings here. Storage. Did I? Yeah, I don't have my ISO. There we go. So let's just grab the ISO there. Okay. Now it's actually going to start it.
All right, this should be a little better. Let's scooch you over here. There we go. So, um, this is what it gave me in my laptop. This is good. And my other laptop, not the blue one, the HP stream that I've been showing you guys. It's an Asus laptop. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, a Core i7. Great laptop. I love it. But it has an NVIDIA GeForce card. I think it's like a 40, 450, 450M. I'm not sure how they number their cards. And I'm not sure how old it is. But it runs well, and I love it. It's kind of got a crappy battery, but... It's a great laptop. It's also touchscreen. This is gonna take a little while, I can tell. Oh boy. It's because I'm streaming. Are we good? Is it, is it running? Oh, yeah, the ISO's running down there. Looks like it. Uh, bring my mouse from this real quick. I like the selection rectangle, how it's all light. It's neat. Let that do its thing in the background there. And I'm not gonna have you open. That's some space some CPU that we can save there. Let's open up Task Manager and see what we got going on. You. Okay, so I don't need my ADB thing on. I love how all the text is so big, man. It's gonna get me every single time. AMD extended whatever. Yeah, we can end that process. And process. Yep. Gee, what else do we need? Okay, OBS needs to be open. Real tech needs to be open. Virtual box crap needs to be open. Okay, that's only the processes I need. So that's good, I guess. I haven't gotten around to making a task killer, but when I when I do that, I'll do that. Are you alive? Oh, free my mouse. Here. Ah, there we go. Uh, where are we at here? Man, this is taking a while. This is really taking a while. I am texting people while I'm waiting, if you're wondering why I'm goofing around on my phone. Well, you can't see that I'm goofing around on my phone, but I, I am goofing around on it. LG makes some pretty nice phones, guys, let me tell you. You can hear my fans revving up. What's going on over there?
Hello. Hello. Maybe I should have given it like two virtual cores or something. Yeah, let's give it two cores. References. Nope, cancel. Okay, we've just got to shut the machine down. Our off machine. Okay. Virtual box back up and running. Where'd I put it? Oh, I stuck virtual box. Here. I don't play around on my Windows partition much. I've got Arch Linux dual booted on this computer, but I don't have OBS set up for it, so. We might have to actually look up a guide for UEFI in VirtualBox. Because with UEFI, it's a pain in the butt. I'm not even joking. Let's do BIOS because I know it works. My dog's loud. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so this is a nice prompt. Arch Linux. Let's, uh, there we go. Isn't this pretty, guys? So, what you do is you select the first option, boot Arch Linux. And this is what you would do on a BIOS machine, not a newer one. So with BIOS, um, it's nice to use Grub. With UEFI, I highly suggest you don't use Grub. Um, I tried using Grub for UEFI and it was just a pain. So I went and looked up a tutorial on how to do UEFI because I was clueless. I don't know, I still have issues with it. And um, this guy even said, hey, you guys can't use Grub, that's my big thing. What you guys have to do is use systemd boot which comes with Arch, and it's great. We might be able to do System D with this as well. But I'm just going to use Grub. Grub goes uh, the fastest. And it looks nicer than System D. It's got like a little frame and everything. System D is just your options right there, and I think they're like left aligned. So, it doesn't look as nice. And this all um, on the screen here is just arch booting up from the ISO. Normally you'd write like a USB thing. All right, it's logging us in. I'm not sure if we need to hit enter for it to do its thing. It's still logging us in. There we go. Okay, so once you get to this red root at Arch ISO, that's where you want to be. Um, that tells you, hey, we logged you in, and you can do your thing now. now let me set this down. So the first thing you want to do, I just forgot about this USB here. Sorry to go off on a tangent, but this thing is broken, and it makes me mad. It's 976 gigabytes, and it's broken. Okay, so first things first, list your disks so you know what's going on and where you're going to install stuff. And with that, you can just use the command fdisk-l. This is all for BIOS. You use something called gdisk for UEFI. 
but for BIOS, we're going to be using FDisk-L. Ah, my nose itches. FDisk-L, excuse me. And then you hit enter, and it gives me the disks that I have. So, if anything is under dev slash loop zero at the bottom, um, oh, I'm sorry, I paused there. That was weird. Let me look up the magnifier. That'll help me out here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read the text over there. If I'm looking that way, I'm looking at the second display where I have the stream up, and that's what's happening if I look in that direction, just so I'm not crazy. Magnifier, turn that boy on. There we go. Oh, the magnifier is not showing up. Mmm. good so the magnifier is running outside of virtual box and that makes me ups or not virtual box but outside of uh views docked docked huh yeah it's not showing anything so we just got to get rid of it it's better anyway okay so dev slash loop that's uh that's usually the ISO or the USB that you wrote it to. If anything's under dev loop zero, you don't want that. Um, and as you can see, dev slash SDA is 15 gigs. So we know which drive we're going to be using, or I think it's called a device node. Um, anything under slash dev slash blah 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 that's called the device node so the device node we're putting stuff on is slash dev slash sda which is the virtual hard drive image we made the 15 gigabyte one as it shows us here so what we're gonna do now is we are going to um make sure that we have an internet connection with just a simple ping command we don't need to do it forever, so do ping dash C. Three is usually what people tell you to do. Actually, I only do two, because two is really all you need. Um, unless you think you have a shaky internet connection, then do like three to five, just to make sure it's stable and doesn't drop off at any point. But I'm gonna do two, so ping dash C two, and then Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Yep, so it looks like it returned it um, 41.8 milliseconds and 29.0 milliseconds. There we go. So we know we have an internet connection. If it gives you an error or it tells you it timed out, that means that you have to set up your internet connection. Um, I'm not sure what VirtualBox uses. Actually, no, that's a lie. I know exactly what VirtualBox uses. It makes a fake Ethernet cable, basically, and it tethers VirtualBox to your computer and uses your computer's Wi-Fi. So it just uses your computer's Wi-Fi. That's basically what it does. So you're always going to have Internet if it's VirtualBox and your computer is connected to the Wi-Fi. So we know we have Internet. Um, one of these times I'm gonna just turn off the internet and do like a full install like you actually would. I'll even write a USB um, and use that empty USB filter we made when we set up the machines and I can actually boot the USB through VirtualBox and install it that way. It might be a little slower but I'll do it for you guys one of these days. So BIOS installation. We have the disk that we want to install stuff on and we have an internet connection. So that's good to go. Um, for BIOS, it's nice to use CF disk. And then, so CF disk is um, a partition editor. And what partitions are, they're basically just pieces of your hard drive. Your hard drive gets split up into a few different pieces when you install an operating system. 
like Windows, they've got a recovery partition, so it's a set space on your hard drive where only recovery stuff can go. And they have a booting partition, which is only where booting information goes for when you're turning on your computer and loading up Windows. And then there's um, your C drive or your data partition, your root partition. And that's where all of your files and your applications and everything go. That's where you play around with in Windows. So we're going to give ourselves a root partition and a swap partition because that's all we need, I believe. Unless we want to install Grub. Yeah, no, we need a third partition too for Grub. So three partitions. A Rudy, uh, <laughs> I almost said Rudy Tootie. Or a booting partition so that it can actually start it up through Grub. A root partition where we're gonna put everything and a swap partition which is like extra RAM if you run out. It's virtual RAM. It's really cool. So, CFDisk is our partition editor, like I said before. And what we're going to do is we're going to do CFDisk and we're going to do it on slash dev slash SDA. Um, I've always been told pick GPT when you're doing partitions, so I don't know why, but we're gonna pick GPT. <laughs> it's not good to not know why though guys don't be content with not knowing what you're doing but GPT has always worked so if you're new to this just pick GPT I don't think MBR works sometimes so as you see here we've got a bunch of free space um, on the left it says device free space it's there's nothing there so what we're gonna do is first we're going to make the boot partition so we use our arrow keys to navigate in the Arch installation. It's the arrow keys in your keyboard. That's it, you don't get a mouse. So we use our arrow keys to go over to new and hit enter. And a boot partition only needs to be 512 big M or megabytes. And then you hit enter. Okay, so as you can see here, we now have a free space underneath in green. And above that, it says device slash dev SDA1. So now that's our first partition on SDA. Um, the start and end part, those are just sectors you start on. So those middle three, you don't really got to pay attention to unless you're getting really technical. Um, the size is 512M or 512 megabytes because it doesn't need to be huge. And the type is Linux file system. So since we're booting on BIOS, we don't want that to be Linux file system. So we scroll over to type, we hit enter, and then we go all the way up to BIOS boot. Okay, so that one is now a BIOS boot partition and Grub's are gonna recognize it once we get to that part. So now we go down to the free space, hit enter to make a new one again. And this one we want to be our root partition so it's going to take up the rest of it but not the swap which actually makes me think we should just make this our swap one so we gave the machine two gigs of memory two gigs of RAM and your swap should only be about half of that as I'm told so we are going to make it 1G this is not going to be root, by the way. I decided we're just going to make it the swap so that we can use the rest for root. It just makes sense to do it that way. It eliminates a lot of the math. So we have a one gigabyte because that's half of two. Simple math. There we go. And that, again, if you look on the right side, it says Linux file system. So we got to go over to type again, hit enter. And we want that to go one more up to Linux swap. And then this last little bit is 13 and a half gigs. And that's where we're going to put our root partition. So we hit new and we just hit enter to use the rest of it. There we go. And the right, that one says Linux file system on the right. And that's correct. We do want that one to be a Linux file system because that's where we're going to put everything. So after all that's done, don't automatically go to quit. I've done that way too many times and just made myself mad. <laughs> Make sure. You go over to right after you finish this and then hit enter and it's going to ask you to verify so you just type yes for yes and you hit enter 
and it'll say the partition table has been altered down on the bottom there. That means that's on your virtual, um, or not your virtual, but it's on your hard drive now. So your hard drive now has those partitions and everything else that you had on it before is gone. This is how it is now. And then after that, you can go to quit and hit enter, or you can just hit um, control, I think it's C to interrupt. Yeah, so control C quits that. So you can also just hit enter on quit, obviously. Both do the same thing. Now what I'm not seeing, what I normally see is above uh, the root at arch ISO thing, it should say syncing disks, but we had an empty disk before this, so it has nothing to sync. It's just writing the partition table brand new. Usually if you're booting on a computer, it'll say syncing disks above, and that just means that it changed it and it's telling you that it's changed. So we have our partition table now. If we do F disk dash L again, it's a lot bigger now. If you look at device SDA 15 gigs, underneath it now says device SDA 1, 2, and 3. And if you look on the right, it tells you the type again, BIOS boot, swap, and file system. That means we, we did it. But um, that's just like a label on it. There's no actual swap partition yet, and there's no actual file system. For the boot partition, you just leave that alone um, for this step. But in this step, we need to actually make that Linux swap partition swap, and we need to make the Linux file system a Linux file system by formatting. So if you're just uh, used to Windows, Usually when you think formatting, you think, oh, it's just going to erase everything on my disk. But that's not necessarily what formatting means. Formatting and deleting data are two different things. What formatting does is it rearranges how files work, basically. And it tells it, hey, files are going to work this way now. And since your old data was written in the old way that files worked, it happens to be deleted. And that's why when you format a disk, it tells you, oh, it's gonna erase all your data. It's just a by, like a side effect basically of changing the file system. It's not real deletion, unless you format and write zeros, in which case it actually deletes everything. I digress. Let's um, make a file system first for the Linux one because that's gonna take the longest. So what you do is you use the make file system command or mkfs, makefs, you get it? Yeah. Dot ext4. Ext4 or extension 4 is a Linux file system. And that's, um, I think, the latest and greatest in the Linux file systems that are extension. There's other file systems you can use like btrfs or xfs but I uh, had trouble with those, so I'm not gonna use those. Extension four is tried and true. Use extension four for your root. So our root partition, like we talked about earlier, is slash dev sda3. So we're going to makefs.x4 slash dev slash sda3, because that's where our root is. And then we hit enter, let it do its thing. It's gonna say it's creating the journal and then writing super blocks and information for the file system accounting, and then it's done. It just does its thing for you. You, do, you just gotta sit and wait through it, that's it. And then we use a command called mkswap, or make swap, and our swap partition was sda2, because our first one was boot, remember? So we just do make swap slash dev slash sda2. And it tells you setting up swap space and then no label and it gives you the unique ID for the partition. So we now have swap and a root partition and our BIOS boot is just left alone. Grub handles that. I need to take this out of my ear. It's really bothering me. So we have our root and our boot and our swap. Now we have to use a command called packstrap. That's packtrap, packstrap. And packstrap is um, an installer basically. It um, gets the Arch Linux repositories and it um, 
installs the base stuff. Oh, wait, no, we can't pack strap yet. I'm going insane. I'm sorry. I totally missed a big part. So we have our partitions set, right? But they're not mounted. The system isn't using them right now. We edited them, but we aren't using them. So you need to use the mount command. And mount just says, okay, um, we're going to use this partition as well. So let's mount slash dev slash sda2. And that's our, no, 3 was our root partition. Dev sda3. And we're going to mount it to a mount point called slash mnt. All right, and it's mounted. So now if we change root to the mount point slash mnt, we're going to be at the root of dev sda3, which is where all our stuff is going to go. It's like being um, in Windows if you were to go to the C drive and go to the very, very, very top of it, where it shows you program files, all of that junk. That's the root of your C drive partition. We're going to the root of our sda3 partition. And that's where we're going to install everything. Because you can't go any farther back than that. And then we're going to mount slash dev slash sda1 to mount boot, I believe. Okay, so we don't have the mount boot mount point, which means we just need to simply make it. It's a folder that we don't have. So we do mkf, no, that's make file system, mkdir, or make directory, because plot twist, folders are actually called dire directories, but they can be treated like filing folders, which is why Microsoft Windows adopted the folders idea. I thought that's pretty neat. That coffee's cold, man. So we go make directory. Why I can't speak. <laughs> make directory slash mount slash boot. There we go. And then we just repeat that mount dev sda one on mount boot. Wrong FS site. Bad option. Bad super block on dev sda one. Missing code page or helper program or other error. So, I don't think you mount your BIOS boot partition. You just leave that alone. If I remember correctly. <laughs> we might have an issue later. We'll see. But I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. Put this back in. So, uh, we need to turn our swap on. And remember, swap is like virtual RAM. So we're going to have an extra one gigabyte of RAM going with us. So altogether, with the two gigs that we gave it, and the one for swap, we're gonna have three gigs of RAM technically to pull from. It's really just gonna pull from two because we're not gonna be using a lot of it. So we do swap on slash dev slash SDA2 or whatever your swap partition is. We used SDA2 if you remember. And then it just tells you it's on. So now that we've mounted our root, we can do pack strap slash mount. So this means we're installing the base to mount. We're also going to get the group called base, which is basic Linux tools, li Linux, Linux tools. <laughs> and we're going to get base dash devel, which is extras. Then we just hit enter and this is going to take the longest time. This part, and we're going to be doing this a few times when we get um, desktop environments and stuff like that. Man, this is terrible. I need to change the font so you guys can see. I'm looking at the stream right now and it's really hard to read. There we go. Oh, my dad's doing some mowing outside too. This is awesome.
Hey, we're getting a solid 300 kilobytes a second. That's actually not bad. Like on the Asus computer, I was only getting um, 100 kilobytes a second. If I was plugged in, I could get about one to two megs a second, which was really nice. Everything was speedy. But this is only going to go about as like a quarter as quick, one fourth as quick. Um, and it's gonna take a little while, especially since we're getting base and base devel. Let me go turn on my lamp and turn it off my big light. I feel like the lighting on the camera is a little weird. How does that look? Oh. This is a little better. Kind of. Looks a little more comfortable. Look at the light. <laughs> Stark white here, man. Is there a way for me to get like um Let me just look up a uh, one single color. Where's the brightness? The brightness all the way up. Ooh, hello. That's bright. I'm going to want here Oh, what am I looking for? Safari. Let's go to Safari. I'm using my iPhone for this. Oh, that's right. I'm going to burn out the camera lens doing that. The iPhone 5S that I have. And I'm just going to find a picture that's like a, like a yellowy color, so it's a little softer on my face, and I'm going to set it up by the screen here. Like, Is it easier to see me? Yeah. Let's put that down and... See the difference? You can't see the difference. Okay. Look at that. It's like a flashlight. <laughs> see here. That's still installing crap. Man, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> All right, let's look here. Um. See like a yellow, orange, go. So I'm just going to search Google for yellow, orange, and we're going to go to images. So how does this look? Yeah, yellow, orange a little better. This darker orange. Ooh, I like that better, yeah, you can tell. here ooh ooh look at that that's not bad I can set that there I need to look up how to set the font for this. Uh, let's look this up. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna have to look up this tutorial that I found for UEFI to see about setting the font. Oh, Arch Linux UEFI install. So this is actually a really, really good tutorial. 
Um, it's the video title is Arch Linux install in less than 10 minutes on a UEFI. What does it say after that? The rest of it got cut off. So Arch Linux install in less than 10 minutes on a UEFI system. And he does it really fast because it's a speed install. So if you can follow him, you learn a lot. If you can't, you gotta look up another tutorial. But I could follow him and it really helped me out. I was actually able to install it on my UEFI laptop. I still gotta do that one though, the HP stream. So where does he set font? Alright, so let me set the quality up here so I can actually read what's going on in there. 1080p at 50. That'll be crystal clear. There we go. That's still installing, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll let that sit. I'll probably draw some pictures. I'll draw some pictures. I could probably be doing homework. Oh, I can't install it yet. So Vim Terminus font, that's what he gets. Oh, he gets Vim and Terminus font. Let me see what the font sets to afterwards. Pacman slash Q1 Terminus font. Okay. And he sets font Tur dash V2. Yo, what? What was that last little bit? V three two A V three two N okay. Linux firmware takes the longest time. So it gets terminus font and vim. He gets, he does Pac-Man Q1, I think, Terminus font, and then he does set font TER-V32N. I hope I got that memorized because I don't want to sit and watch it again. Do, 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 do. Let's find my stream again.
There it is. picks are in my case. I don't want to get those. on. Ah. Uh, oh, that's bright. Hello. Yeah, that's not bright enough. How's this one? Good color there. No, the white's too too much white on it. There we go. Let's get this. I do that there yeah there we go Is that a good color it's like a pinkish it's salmon it's not that bad put you there Grab the cable out of there. Oh, where is it? Oh, did I take it out? Where did I put it? Let's set my headphones up here real quick.
Alrighty. <sighs> Did I turn my amp off? No. right now. Do, 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 do. Oh, you know what I could do to help you guys out, though? I could totally just make this bigger. Put you out more. Just like that. Kinda. Uh, huh. Now let's transform. Where is that? Transform. Center to screen. There we go. And then relock you. There we go. That's a little bigger. Let's see how much easier that is for you guys to read. Let's look. Oh, it's not much easier to see, is it?
Yeah, not very much. Oh, look, looks like it's about done. Oh, I need to get the microphone off the strings. Or not microphone, the headphone was laying on the strings. song though. I haven't heard in a while, but it's a good song. This is what an actual Linux installation looks like. I'm usually like playing on my ukulele or my guitar while I wait for this crap to happen. I'm never productive while I wait for downloads. <laughs> Can you hear me, why then? 
That's way too high to sing that one. That's the actual key, I believe. Do you have the time? Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once? Well, I am one of those melodramatic fools. Neurotic to the bone, no doubt about it Sometimes I give myself the creeps Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me They all keep setting up I think I'm Think I'm Think I'm cracking up Am I just paranoid? Or am I just stoned? To a shrink to analyze my dreams. She said it's a lack of success bringing me down. I went to a whore. She said my life's a bore. To quit my whining cause it's bringing her down. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. It all keeps adding up I... I can't get that high when it goes up Think I'm cracking up Am I just paranoid? I don't Resting to control So I better hold on Lights go out and I can't be saved Tides that I tried to swim against That's a weird key to sing that in. It's down in D flat, I think. Up here. So it's... G minor. That's weird. I don't want to do that in G minor. Oh no, it's an E minor there. That's an A. So an E minor. It's done. Okay. We can play guitar in a bit. We gotta finish this up. And mind you, this is a short one. Because UEFI is going to take a whole lot longer. Because I'm not sure what I'm doing. Excuse me, by the way. Alrighty. 
So we need to set the font. Um, we're gonna do Pacman dash S Y Vim and Terminus font. That's the first thing you did. And if it tells me you can't find it, I'm gonna be upset. So literally, if you're installing Arch on a BIOS system, or you're installing it on VirtualBox, you can look up any other tutorial. If you had trouble seeing all of the stuff earlier than this, um, I would just look up another tutorial because they actually explain it pretty well. It's not as big and scary as it looks. Oh, Vim's gonna take a while to download. Jeez. Let's start playing some more, I guess. Let's try to figure out, um, what is it called? Clocks, I think? Something like that. And it's by Coldplay. It's a good song. It's the Lights go out and I can't be saved. Tides I tried to swim against. Brought me down upon my knees So I beg, I beg and plead Saying, come out of the things unsaid Shoot an apple off my head And a trouble that can't be named Tigers are waiting to be tame Singing It's a good song Let's try it and see Subby the bass for C is G or the fifth. I say bass, people say fifth because they're smart and I taught myself to say bass like a dummy. It's called the fifth. The fifth to C is G. So it's the fifth minor after your root chord. So C, fifth minor would be G minor. D and the fifth to D is A. And that's C major seven and then to E minor. Well this is all up one, so transpose, but Oh, okay, that's done. So Pac-Man Dash Q one, I think he said. And it was Ter oh. Terminus font. Q maybe it was QI. Uh, oh, my phone just fell. Set font. Ter. V thirty two N Did I get uh, do I gotta go back and watch it again? Are you kidding me? Wait, maybe it was a big eye. Maybe it's that QI, it's that Pac-Man QI command. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You guys can ignore this part. This part's irrelevant. You're not gonna be doing this because you're gonna be able to read it on your screen. QI. Oh boy. I gotta look it up again. Ow. I hurt my ears. Arts on XUVFI install. Okay, this guy. Ah. Did the quality go back down? Are you kidding me? I gotta fix the quality real quick. Nope, standing at 50. 
50 frames a second, man, that's smooth. QL. It's an L. It's gotta be an L. If it's not an L, I'm gonna cry. Not really. I'm not really gonna cry. That's what it was. There we go. So now I can set font. I got the font name wrong, didn't I? Set font. Do that. Let's install that text. Add input file size. Yeah, I thought so. Tur dash D32? No, 32N. Okay, that's not it. Is it just V32? Font file tur V32. What is going on here? Okay, let me just let you guys listen to this. This is how fast he's going. Uh, I can pick those up later. Let's just quickly see that we have um, UF EFI. Yes. Okay, now we need. Nope, this is after he got it. There we go. This should be before. Yeah. So he's getting them in the terminus fine. Um, okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. forgot about that. Does Pac-Man so, QL Terminus, and he does it, he does that so fast, like, here, pause. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. he does his little tongue thing, and then he does Pac-Man slash QL Terminus dash font, and then hits enter. So that's what I did. That's what all that junk in white up above the red stuff is. Set font. Just choose it. Set font tur dash v32. One in the end. T-E-R dash V-3-2-N. That's what I'm doing, right? What am I missing here? I want you guys to be able to read this. What's V28 N? Let's look at that. V28 N. Font, Katie, font top. Okay. Let's just look at this directory real quick. So I'm gonna use the CD command, which means change directory, and it means I'm going into another folder. So I'm going to go to user share. Was it KBD? KBD. I think that's for keyboard, KBD, that makes sense. Console, console, font, slash. And then we're gonna list, what's in here? That's a lot of fonts, holy cow. Can I go up? No.
Okay, so we have a tur V32 N. Ter T E R dash V thirty two, right? Thirty two and there. Is that font? What am I missing here? Are you kidding me? Let's do tar dash x v z f. I I'm just gonna try to unpack it. Is that gonna help? This does not look like a tar archive compared to previous errors. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? The sent font thing isn't working, and it's making me mad. You guys might not be able to see anything unless, ooh, unless I just max this out and make it huge. So I'm gonna close that one real quick. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add screen capture or display capture, that's what it is. Big VGA, there we go. That'll make things easier to see. Nope, display one sixteen nine hundred. Okay. Okay. There we go. We can just Yeah. There we go. It's right there. Now I can actually see what's going on. Sweet. Scoot it over there a little bit. Okay, lock that there. Good. So face cam has to go up top. Turn on big VGA. Bam, son. Probably make it bigger even. Okay, let me unlock it. Unlock big VGA. Where's the bottom here? Make it bigger. There we go. So we don't need all that. And I guess we could set face cam. Oh, nope, oh, whoa. Whoa there, buckaroo. I'm gonna scoot you over here. Make me a little bigger. There we go. Okay. Now I can actually see what's going on. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Uh, where's my headphones? Actually, let's move me up a little more so I'm not in the way of whatever I'm typing in. Just set me up here. That's easier for you guys to see everything going on. All right, block that. Okie dokie. Got this here. Let's just see. Lock big VGA. How small is the HP one? Oh, it's underneath, so I don't know. Oh, it's not that much. <laughs> Look how small it is compared to this big one. That's crazy, man. So I'm not sure. What does that say? This down here should tell me the display size. Nope, that's not display. Indicates the activity of the display. Percent. Green one. Scale factor. Yo, I can scale it up. I don't want to make it two times as big. Virtual screen one. What's the current size? I don't know. It doesn't tell me the current size. Are you kidding me? Probably like 640 by 480 or something like that. Anywho. Let me get back on the stream real quick. There we go. Back on.
Oh, you can actually see everything. That's so cool. Okay. Let's get out of here now. Um, all right. I use CD to go to root because if you just do CD and leave it empty, it automatically goes all the way to the back or the top. Now. Whew. I've got some pretty funny looking cheeks. I just realized that looking at the camera. Let me go up my curtain. I have an idea. That might help me out. Good. I shed some light on me. Yeah. That's better. Kind of. Okay. Not really, but it's what it is. All right. Let's actually do stuff. my light down. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're not setting font. Um, we pack strapped last time. Oh, this is a little too big. One minute. Where's the big VGA? Unlock. Yeah, that's gotta be uh, scooted over a little. Make it smaller. That's the full range of it all there. All right. Get down to the bottom. Do do do. Sending a text real quick. It's a good thing to know that my Discord web hooks are on. It just sent me a notification that I was streaming. Thanks. I had no clue. There's a hole in my sock and it's bothering me. There's a lot of little things bothering me today. <laughs> this is uh, my Arch ISO. It's my USB key where I usually have Arch installed. Right now it has Antergos because... This thing causes me trouble. So, trying to install Arch on it was just a no. Like, pure Arch. I just got Android Ghost because it handles most of the installation for you. But, it didn't work. So, I've got to install regular Arch on it. And I'm not doing that right now. I'm doing it on a virtual machine. Because I feel like you guys should know how to do that. But let's actually get to installing it. Because that's the important thing here. So, we pack strapped. Which means we can now do arch ch root or change root, which means that instead of if we were to do cd, um, it would not put us to the back of the ISO image on the VirtualBox machine. So right now what we're running off of is the .iso file. That's basically our fake USB or a fake CD, and it's pulling files from that. Now we're going to change it to the storage disk that we made. So archroot slash mount, because if you can actually remember all the way back there when I mounted everything, I mounted the root to mount. There we go. So, first things first, we are going to get some essentials here. I'm not good with Vim, but I'm going to get it. Why Vim? Well, this phone's bright. What, you, what? What's going on? This phone's really bright. Holy cow. Yep. When is Kit gonna get a dark theme? 
Probably never because kick is just ridiculous. Kick is for normies. Put my phone down there. I need some water soon. My phone battery is draining, it's not charging. Oh, because they have it on file transfer. I should probably put it to charging instead of file transfer. We're not messing with my phone right now.